Hello, everybody. In this episode, I'm kind of uh, adding on to the previous episode of doing animation within Premiere, doing some basic animation within Premiere. And uh, one of those practical uh, uses of animation is going to be the Ken Burns effect. The Ken Burns effect has come from a kind of a history of where they had still photos to work with and they would actually zoom the camera slowly up to them instead of just shooting still images that just were static and not moving. So we're going to show that sort of effect here. I'm going to import some, some uh, still images. And the Ken Burns effect really primarily is used with uh, photos. Now, if you're going to be importing fo importing photos, one, a couple things to note here. First of all, I'm going to go up to Edit and go to My Preferences and go to General. And under General here, uh, this is kind of important if you're importing photos. Your default to scale frame size. Typically, uh, this is unchecked as a de as as the default. If you check, I usually try to have this check marked as a default. So whenever I'm working, I usually have that check mark because when you import it, if you're importing, especially let, let's look at these uh, this footage here. I'm going to select this first clip and notice these uh, photos that I've got are are 4K and above. Uh, so about about 4,000 pixels or more. If we're working, let's make let's I'm going to generate a timeline here. I'm going to go new sequence here and create a new timeline. And I'm just going to do, let's say I'm out operating out of a 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second timeline. So about half the resolution of these photos here. Now, if that thing is checkmarked when I import these photos that default the scale frame size, and I grab a photo and I drop it in, this photo is actually a 16 by 9 photo, so it actually fits right into my 1920 by 1080 here. But uh, I'm going to double click on my photo here and scale this down. This is the entire image here. Uh, instead of 4K, it takes this 4K photo and zooms it down to 1920 by 1080. If it's not a 16 by 9, you'll see kind of these, uh, you'll see the pillar boxes on the side or the letter boxes on top. Top, depending on the aspect ratio of the of the of the image. I'm going to get rid of these photos here. I'm going to go up to Edit, Preferences, General, and I'm going to uncheck my default scale to frame size. Hit OK. I'm going to import those photos now. And now when I grab one of these large photos here and I drag and drop it into my timeline, notice all of a sudden it is zoomed up. Let me double let me double click on this. And if we move this around, notice how this has been zoomed up because this is a 4K image being put into a 1920 by 1080 timeline. And since I did not have that check marked, basically this is not scaling this down to fit in this window here. It's showing its actual resolution compared to the resolution of your timeline here. So, so it's basically, it looks like it's zoomed up there, but it's actually displaying the actual resolution of the photo compared to your timeline. So uh, let, let me get rid of that. Now, if you've imported a bunch of stuff and you realize you did not have that scale to frame size check marked, what you can do is I can select all the items that I did not have that when it was check marked. Actually, I'm going to change it now, but these ones, I'm going to check mark it now, but that doesn't help these ones here. It only helps things that I import from now on. So now that these are selected here, what I can do is actually go up to clip, go to video options and check mark scale to frame size. It has now added that attribute to all these clips. So now when I drag one in, notice it actually puts it actually scales that's 4K this 4K footage down into my 1920 by 1080 makes it fit in my window up here. So that's kind of good to know before we get started here. Another little tip I give to people is when you import photos, uh, I want you to look at this here. The duration here is uh, 4 seconds and 29 frames. It's basically like a 5 second clip here. Uh, it it, it uh, generates a 5 second clip out of a still photo. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to Edit, Preferences, General. And up here you notice that the still image default duration is set at five seconds. You can do it by frames or seconds, but since you're going to be, you might be changing timeline uh, frame rate, you might just want to keep this at seconds here. If you're importing photos and you want them to be longer than that, you can change this to 10 seconds. So you can change it to 20 seconds, however long you want those things to last, depending on how long you want them on the screen default uh, as a default, especially if you're importing a ton of photos and just doing a quick montage of them. Uh, this is very helpful. But right now, these are at five seconds. That's fine for what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to grab a bunch of these photos here. I'm going to grab all of them. And I'm going to drop them into my timeline. Okay, now I'm going to go over inside my timeline here. I'm going to hit Shift Plus to bring up my track height. Now, if you're going to have dissolves between these, let's let's. I'm just going to add a cross dissolve between each one of these. I'm going to select everything in there. I can just hit Control A and then hit Control D, and it'll add the default transition, which is a cross dissolve across each one of these here. So now, as I hit Home, go to the beginning, it will fade in, and then it will come. It'll go about five seconds, and it will hit this cross dissolve. And dissolve to the next one. I'm going to put this on full quality here. And then as we go through, it'll dissolve to the next one, and so on. So I've got all these photos here as it's going from photo to photo and doing these cross dissolves. But this is kind of a boring 
way to, to display still photos. So what the Ken Burns effect does is try to add a little bit of dynamics uh, to your shot here. And usually by zooming and by panning, things like that, you're going to uh, generate what's called, you're, you're going to um, add a little bit more movement to these still images here. So let's go through that. So I'm going to select my first clip here and I'm going to go up to the effect controls and we have the effect controls that come up with the animation area right here. I'm going to actually make a little bit more room here for my animation by grabbing these little areas here and open up my keyframe area right here so I have some more room. So let's say we want to do a kind of a zoom and we want to kind of zoom it up to this uh, praying mantis here. So if we're going to do that, what I want you to notice is I grab the scale here. If we're going to animate our scale as we scale up, notice that that thing does not stay centered. You know, it eventually kind of gets, starts cropping out of the shot. So we, we're going to be changing two attributes here. We're going to be changing scale and we're going to be changing position because look at this as we scale up, we want the position to actually kind of keep this thing in frame like that. So we want to zoom, but then uh, now as we zoom out, notice our position has changed. It's all wonky and out of space there. So I'm going to go up and reset my motion here and get it back to normal. And what I'm going to do is I've got my little uh, fade in here and then my cross dissolve to the next shot. And this area represents the duration of the shot here uh, from beginning from the beginning visual frame to the end visual frame here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of move in the middle somewhere here past that dissolve so I can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going to go over and turn on my position keyframe and my scale keyframe and add two keyframes right there. I'm going to move this over here and do the same thing. Add two more keyframes right there and there as for position and scale. Now I'm going to think about where I want this to start out. Do I want to be zoomed in or do I want it to gradually zoom in? Uh, for this, let's say I want it to be wide and then zoom in. So I'm going to go to my first keyframes and these are exactly where I want them. I'm going to go to my next keyframes here and land on those by hitting the next the next keyframe right there and land right on exactly on the keyframe. Don't try to eyeball this and try to get it on there. Just hit these little arrows back and forth and actually land on your keyframes so you're right on them. So now on these keyframes, I'm going to change my scale and I'm going to change my position and get that where I want it to end up. These keyframes have stayed the same. So go to these keyframes, it's wide. And as I go to these keyframes, it's been zoomed up. Now this gave me kind of a quick zoom up because I've, these keyframes are a little close together. So watch this. That was pretty fast there. But what I can do now, and I usually do these keyframes within the middle, away from the dissolves, because it's hard to really see kind of where they're at, where you're framing things at when they're inside the dissolve here. So I'm going to grab these two keyframes here, just drag a marquee over it, and drag it to the beginning. And then I grab these two and drag them to the end there. And now this will fit, this will uh, be zooming all the way through this dissolve here. Let's take a look at that now. As we play here, it's doing the zoom. And it's keeping it framed right here in the center because of position. And then it dissolves to the next clip. Now let's do a different type of move here. I'm going to hit my the letter B for my ripple edit. I'm going to grab this end of the clip here and extend this edit a little bit here so it lasts a little bit longer so I have a little bit more room for animation. I'm going to hit my V for my arrow tool, select that clip, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add two keyframes here for position and scale, just move a little ways in and add two more keyframes. I'm just uh, I'm not, it's okay to put these keyframes anywhere, but I just don't put them over the dissolves just for the beginning setup so I can grab those move them over if I want to. But I'm going to um, arrow to the right. Let's say we want this to start zoomed up. So I'm going to zoom this up here. And if you zoom up too far, of course, on, on uh, I mean, the, with phone photos and, uh, and DSLR photos, uh, you get such high resolution that you can get away with a lot. Usually something like this, uh, 1920 by 1080 using a 4K footage, I can zoom this clear up to 200% and it will still look good. It'll still look like it's got a good resolution to it. So I'm going to change my position here and get this thing kind of right where I want it. Right about there looks good. And these two keyframes are my original position and scale. So as I jump to that one, it's doing a zoom out. So now I can grab these ones and drag them over. So when it comes into the dissolve, it's already moving. Some people will add their dissolves afterwards. And what you got to realize is if you do that, you're probably going to have some space before. And it will look like this. Watch this as it cuts to the next shot, it dissolves to the next shot. It's sitting still and then it starts moving. It's very subtle, but you notice it. Here's a little bit more extreme version. It's sitting still and then it starts moving. So if you add a dissolve afterwards, don't forget to grab these and drag them back to the beginning of the dissolve. Now, as we fade from one to the next, it's already in motion and moving as it fades in. So now that it hits this point, sometimes you don't have to have it dissolve. You don't have to have it moving the entire image, but say we want to have it come to a complete stop right here. 
at this thing and, and, and on the picture there. If you don't want this to be so abrupt that it just suddenly comes to a stop like that and it's finished, what I can do here is what, you re re what we are really noticing is a scale here. So I can right click on my scale and tell it to ease into this keyframe. It will gradually come to a stop at the end of the scale. Watch this. And notice how it just kind of slowly comes to a stop there at the end of the scale. And then I also notice a little teeny weird bump on the position right there. So I'm going to grab my, I'm going to go to my temporal interpolation on my ending keyframe of position and tell it to also ease into that thing there for time wise. It's going to uh, just gradually come to a gradual stop on position and scale. And there we go. And notice how it has this very nice soft stop now like that. And then it dissolves to the next clip and so on. So let's show another little type here. Maybe we can do a, maybe we can do a pan on one of these things here. Say we want to kind of have a little pan across this, this image right here. So what we can do is like the clip, of course, uh, I'm going to extend this clip just so we have a little bit longer pan. I'm going to drag that out and I've got a little bit longer one, did a ripple edit there. I'm going to move up here and I'm going to uh, change my scale. And since I'm doing a pan, I'm not, I'm not going to mess with the scale keyframe. I'm just going to, let's take this up to 200% there and it's already zoomed up 200%. But now we're going to do a pan across this image here. So I'm going to add a beginning keyframe for my position. And I'm going to add just kind of an arbitrary point there, a, another keyframe for my ending position. So let's go to the beginning here. I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to grab my horizontal position because it's doing a pan here. I'm going to start over here kind of at the end of the frame. I'm going to find the end of the frame there, right about there. And uh, that's where it begins. And I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to make this pan to the right like that. And that's going to be my ending keyframe right there. And now notice as this pans, one, one major issue here is notice uh, this is progressive scan. So you'll notice it looks very stroby. That is just something uh, with the nature of progressive scan and film, something you got to deal with. Uh, if you don't want it to look that stroby, then you got to slow it down. One way you can do that is I can grab uh, this keyframe, drag it over, grab this key keyframe, drag it over like that. And then it's going to take longer. And let's look Look at that. So that is still pretty stroby. So what we can do is we can make the pan a little shorter or I can make the clip longer. I'm going to make the pan uh, uh, less extreme here. I'm going to go over to my horizontal point and move this in a little bit, maybe right there. Go over to this point and grab my horizontal and drag it right there. And let's see how that looks. I'm going to move these to the extremes there and see how this looks as it pans. And that's looking better. Still going a little too fast. What I could do uh, let's make the clip a little bit longer. I'm going to drag that out longer. I'm going to grab this keyframe, drag it across, and let's see if this is a smooth pan yet. It's getting there. See, that's even still a little too fast for, for me. So let's change these extremes, move that in a little further, and just have it do kind of a subtle pan here. Right about there. Move these to the ends of the dissolves there. And there we go. This is a nice steady zoom, or this is a nice steady pan now, and it doesn't look stroby at all. In fact, when they're shooting film and shooting movies, they watch the speed that they're panning the camera at, especially if it's just like a beauty shot like this, because you will notice the strobing. You notice that kind of that, that choppiness of the, uh, well, it's not progressive scan of film, but it's a, a progressive scan kind of simulates film. I'm going to grab this keyframe, move it in a little bit, and we'll have it come to a stop right there. I'm going to right click on this, say temporal interpolation, and tell it to ease in on the time here. And it will gradually come to a stop like that and it looks like it's a gradual pan kind of coming to a stop there and there we go one other little item i'm going to show here is how to copy and paste these effects from clip to clip you can customize a couple as long as the clips are kind of framed the same and the resolution is very similar between sh between uh, images you're going to be able to copy and paste some of these effects here for example let's go to this clip right here and we've got this little zoom in and and all of these are the exact same resolution so i'm kind of lucky here but i'm going to grab these keyframes right here I'm going to select this clip here. I'm going to do Control C or Command C on a Mac and copy that clip. I'm going to move down to another clip here. And notice this duration of this clip is different from the duration of this clip. But what I'm going to do is select this clip here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say Paste Attributes. It's going to say, what do you want to paste? I'm going to paste my motion attributes that I created from the other clip. And I hit OK and it has pasted those keyframes. And it will actually retime these things to try to fit in with the length of this new clip here, especially if it's shorter. Uh, so what I can do, so it's, it's tried to kind of uh, judge the space here, but it didn't do a, a perfect job. So I'm going to grab these keyframes, drag them in, and now we have basically that same effect here with that zoom out. And since this is a shorter clip, 
that zoom is a lot faster because now it's uh, tried to it tried to bring those keyframes in proportionally here. So let's do a little experiment here. I'm going to undo that and, and take those keyframes out. Let's make this a, let's make this a lot longer. Let's make it super long. And now watch what happens as I right click on this and do paste attributes and hit OK. Notice I got the end keyframes here and the other ones are like way over here. It's tried to do this proportional uh, keyframing thing and it didn't do too good of a job there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that. I'm going to select this clip and I'm going to grab these two keyframes right here and copy that. I'm going to grab all these keyframes here. I'm going to do this a little different way. I'm going to copy those keyframes. I'm going to go to this clip now. I'm going to put my playhead a little so that the keyframes start right there and control V and paste and it pasted those keyframes in. Now I have the keyframes in here, but they're uh, timed a little wrong, so I can now drag these back and I have a lot more control over these. I'm gonna drag these over. So now we've got this kind of nice slow zoom out. This is a very long clip, so forward, and then it gradually comes to a stop right there. So you have two different methods of getting keyframes from clip to clip. This is the, probably the better one that I like, is actually selecting the clip, Finding the keyframes that you want to copy, just dragging across and copying them, and then moving on to a different clip like right here. But if it's if this clip is a lot shorter than the other one, when you paste, and here I click in this window and paste, I got the first keyframe there and the other keyframe is clear down here and you're not going to be able to see that unless you stretch that clip out. So if you're copying and pasting keyframes from a shorter clip to a longer clip, I would copy the keyframes right out of this effect controls window. Otherwise, you have to basically select the clip, control C to copy it, right click on the clip you want to paste it to and do paste attributes and hit OK on the motion and there they are pasted and it's now proportional. So two, two different ways of doing those right there. And since this clip is shorter, it's actually doing it faster and we're getting kind of that strobey look again. So that's kind of a quick overview of the Ken Burns effect and now as we play through these images we have these kind of nice soft subtle moves as it goes from flows from clip to clip and we got some nice dynamics added and it just makes me feel really really relaxed and lovely. Anyway if you have any questions please post them and thanks for watching.